found rather apparent uh, that in some circles, there's still this narrative, right? This perception that Fusion 360 to Autodesk Inventor, well, Fusion's like the consolation prize, right? It's the poverty model. It's the official price variant. Neil! Neil, you trend-setting raconteur. You can't be comparing a Ferrari to a Fiat, mate. What a surprise. What an absolute shock, horror, rotten surprise that the Rolls-Royce has got more features than the Reliant Robin. Well, mate, here's the news. Autodesk gone fucking about with Fusion 360. And if you've got the commercial subscription to Fusion, it's only going to take you to add three of the available seven extensions before you're paying yearly for Fusion. What you'd be paying for a license of Inventor, with Fusion having an eye-watering eight and a half thousand pounds per year worth of available subscription options. You can't spec Inventor up to eight and a half grand a year, mate. That's some fiat. But either way, this feedback all came out of a very well-received video showing what Inventor has that Fusion doesn't. It's all the flip one of this one. I'll link it whichever direction the video's appearing and you can watch it after this one. And for those who watched that one and decided it was best to take the piss out of my jacket because that was all the takeaway they are from that video, mate, the jacket stays. Read 10 things Fusion 360 does better than Inventor. Number one, and if you if you spot something different going on here, uh, I might have got away with it. Maybe, maybe not. Because my original number one just got axed during editing because I realized uh, that Inventor could actually do the thing that was going to be number one. Doesn't matter, mate, doesn't matter because I found something way cooler in Fusion. So Fusion's surfacing tools are generally quite comparable with Inventor to a point, but there's a few surfacing tools in Fusion that Inventor just doesn't have. First would be the quick feature delete with an auto heal. This is pretty nice. You just pick any face on a feature in Fusion on the model, hit the delete key, then Fusion just deletes the entire feature and heals the model up afterwards. Uh, Inventor can kind of do this, but it isn't anywhere near as intuitive. Now, Fusion also has an untrimmed feature. It's very bizarrely named, but it's quite useful for repairing surface data and quickly patches things up in bulk. Uh, but my absolute favorite, and uh, this is awesome. I would have used this so many times during the tutorials that I've done over the years. It's one called Surface Offset. Inventor just can't do this. You pick literally any face on a model and Fusion will float a new surface off from that face using the original face as the new shape for your surface. And then at whatever offset distance you want, and you can then either edit that new surface or thicken it out into a solid. And what you've got, mate, is an absolutely insanely powerful tool for creative design. Number two, T-splines. Now, it is true that the BYU tech bought by Autodesk back in 2010 did ultimately make its way into both Inventor and what then became Fusion 360 at the time with Inventor having its freeform tools and Fusion just calling them form, I think. <laughs> ultimately though, Fusion 360 has seen much, well, it's seen further development in that area than Inventor. Uh, you, can you can achieve pretty much the same designs in both Inventor and Fusion 360 using form and freeform. Uh, but Fusion offers a more granular level of control and fine tuning over T splines. One such example of this would be Associative Match, which is unique to Fusion 360. This links the freeform world to what's going on in the parametric world. And, mate, this is straight up some S tier capability. Let's say you've got a T spline or a freeform object in a design alongside a regular parametric feature, all done with sketches and extrudes and all that. So you use the match tool with this Associative tick box. And that creates a relationship between the two bodies. So in the future, if the T-spline body does get changed, that associative match is going to keep things all linked together with the parametric body. And if you haven't heard of this one already, mate, where you've been, Fusion's got this little thingy-jig called Generative Design, uh, originally born out of the early project called Dreamcatcher. Or as invent users just watched in absolute amusement is this progressive, futuristic, next-level Clearly high investment, high value technology just completely skipped Inventor, passed them by, and made an absolute beeline right for Fusion 360 and stayed there. Yeah, how about that? Uh, generative design is basically AI product design. You tell the cloud-based engine what materials you want something to be manufactured from, what loads you expect it to be put under, transform constraints, all that kind of stuff, how you expect it to actually be manufactured, and all the safety levels you want it to conform to. And then generative design is going to go off in the cloud and knock up a whole bunch of design ideas. Uh, some with that sort of you know that webbed alien sort of structure effect that you see here and there. It's absolutely class. Oh, um, Mike, sorry. Uh, hi, I, I know you're busy. Uh, probably in your dinner or just drinking your tea there. Um, so can I just trouble you to press the subscribe button, please, mate, if you don't mind. <laughs> that would be great. Uh, I, I know you just found this video, and I, I know you're into Waterdesk and stuff. Um, 
but I, I, it's sad if you just left um, without you know seeing anything else that I do. I know you like this sort of stuff, but so if you press subscribe, you'll see the, the stuff I do in the future. Thanks, thanks, Matt. I'll, I'll, I'll stop. I'll, I'll carry on. You, you press that, and we'll. Uh, I'll see you. In, I'll see you in a bit. Thanks. This is where we begin to start seeing the versatility of Fusion 360 as a multidiscipline design platform. But Autodesk keeps saying that it is. Because it is. And it's got its own PCB design suite made possible through the Eagle acquisition. Now, uh, arguably false advertising aside, because I'm pretty sure you can't literally make anything with, with Fusion 360's PCB suite, make me a clone of Cameron Diaz from 1994, and then we'll talk. Uh, but aside from that, it, it'll do you pretty good printed circuit board layouts, component placement, and routing for setting out electrical connectivity. Fusion will ultimately let you work in both a 2D and a 3D environment for PCB design and gives multiple different options for fabrication output, such as the standard Gerber file output. And credit for all the imagery and videos that you're seeing right now on the screen goes to the YouTube channel, Will Donaldson, because bugger if I know how to design a circuit board layout. All right, this is a prime example of why there's such drama and confusion over Fusion 360 versus Inventor and which one you should go with, because Fusion has this paid, one of the seven extensions is the product design extension. And within that is something called the volumetric lattice. And this thing is outstanding. Pick any solid body and Fusion's gonna offer up a number of cell shapes commonly used within internal additive manufacturing or 3D printing. Or if you wanna bang up something super creative, you can actually use your own custom profiles for the lattice structure. Fusion then gives you this intricate control over the lattice formation and then at the end, what you actually get is a physically accurate solid, not just some patterned texture with transparency cutouts, which is kind of what it looks like in the first place, but it isn't. It's a physically accurate model. Another little belt that you need to fusion found in that product design extension is geometric pattern. It isn't perfect, but if you're using Inventor and you've ever needed to create radial or uniform solid patterns, then yeah, mate, this might sting a bit. Geometric pattern lets you pick a face, then either a standard primitive or a custom solid of your choosing for patterning, and then you can define your own distribution over a face. You can spread the solid out radially, rectangular patterns. You can define spacing, stagger the solid size for gradual pattern effects, then either use the pattern to make material or cut using the pattern through the existing body. So that's geometric pattern. Possibly an intentional omission from Inventor this one because uh, it's maybe mostly used more, I don't know, in the smaller hobbyist workflow, mesh editing. So both Inventor and Fusion can import STL files and recognize a full mesh feature, but from there, Inventor can't really do much with an STL file. Fusion takes over from here. Fusion's got a full mesh direct editing environment with a stack of repair, build, refine, and manipulation tools for the mesh. Now, obviously this is gonna be used by a lot of folk making tweaks to STL files before sending them out over to their 3D printing slices, of which they even give you a built-in STL export for that. Uh, one new addition to this, which absolutely blew my mind, was the ability to take in an STL mesh into Fusion 360. Again, this is unique to the product design extension. Uh, convert it to an organic T-spline and then have at it with the full direct editing freeform workflows. Another area that's quite surprising and difficult to understand how Fusion could be so much stronger than Inventor at, and that's simulation. Now, something which I didn't mention in the first video when I was comparing like what Inventor's got a Fusion doesn't, was that Inventor has a unique feature called dynamic simulation. It's basically kinetic simulation for mechanisms at a significantly advanced level. But for FEA, Inventor's capable, but limited in study types. Fusion 360, over and above what Inventor has. So, and for this, we're ignoring the existence of Nastran because that's technically a completely separate product. Fusion can do electronics cooling simulations, right? Technically, you, you could simulate PC case fan airflow over a motherboard if you wanted to and the impact that has on the thermals. It'll simulate how various heat sources transfer between bodies and the impact the heat has. It'll do initial velocity simulation, dynamic impact simulation. It's got a huge stack of simulations which are all done in the cloud, which again, might be not preferable to some people. Inventor does local simulations, fortunately fusion simulations, mostly all cloud-based apart from their linear FEA. This one is almost impossible to explain as just a matter of fact, just due to Autodesk's convoluted tiered subscription structure, and that's the CAM capability. So let's just put it this way. Free Fusion 360 for personal use gives you basic CAM for 2.5 and 3-axis milling, whilst Inventor 
uh, as a standalone product gives you zero cam capability. <laughs> there are upgrade paths for cam for, for both in, for Fusion and Inventor. Uh, Inventor's got Inventor Cam, which is part of the product design and manufacturing collection, whilst Fusion has greater milling capabilities when you pay for the commercial license going up to five axes with even more machining automation and toolpath mods on offer through the machining extension. So because Inventor doesn't actually have cam as a native thing, it would kind of, it should be its own video to be sort of Inventor cam versus Fusion cam. So we'll strike this, we'll, we'll strike this one up as Fusion cam, Inventor can't. This is a sibling of generative design and currently doesn't need any extensions or cloud credits to run it. But again, Inventor users just watch in disbelief as Fusion gets all the cool stuff. Automated modeling. Imagine you sat designing something, you're just at your desk, just toodling along, and you think, Do you know what? I, I, just, I just can't be chewed today, really can't be bothered. Or maybe you want to come up with something super creative, but I don't know, your brain cogs just aren't turning. Well, just hop over to Automated Modeling in Fusion 360, pick the faces you want to design something between, tell it if there's something you want to dodge, and it'll just model something for you in between the two faces and it'll even give you six options to pick from. Uh, pick the one you want, and the, your job is just done for you. You end up with a proper solid body that can then even be edited like anything else you've done in the T-spine tools. I'm so, sorry. Sorry, did someone say something about Fiat's and Ferraris? Right, so Inventor has its content center. Sure, that's its own thing though, in its own right, doing its thing. Fusion, on the other hand, has the McMaster car component library as well as trace parts built in. Inventor is actually really poor on this front. Uh, people often make a big deal out of Inventor's supplier content center, which is a button on the ribbon bar, but in reality, Inventor's supplier content center, that's like, lit. It is just a hyperlink to a bunch of web pages. No joke, it just opens a web browser and lets you download models to a zip file. Could have manually unzipped the stuff and then placed it into your assemblies. It's a complete waste of time. Fusion though, let's got a fully integrated real world supplier part library from actual suppliers that you can place orders from. Granted, the user interface is, it's appalling. It's squished, clunky, quite often the CAD models also fail to download, but that's probably the website's problem. But either way, having access to actual off the shelf parts that come down with manufacturer part numbers in them, and more to the point, these are their models, their designs, so you know they're good. This is really valuable and a huge source of data. It's a weird one, this one. Something they say wasn't possible, or let's just say, uh, wasn't feasible to have an inventor because of performance reasons. But here it is, Fusion 360 happening every five minutes. Autosave, yeah, mate, can you believe it? Again, look, I don't know if this is, I don't know if the lack of autosave in inventor is a decision being stuck to because of reasons that were valid from 15 years ago, you know, I don't know, slow save times, but. Come on, mate, we've got laptops with 16 cores, desktops running at what 5.8 gigahertz now, DDR5, we've got PCI Express Gen 4 solid state storage as default now. Surely, surely, I don't know. Either, either way, Fusion 360 auto saves you work every five minutes, Inventor does not. Right, this one might be far from a competitor to Cura, but Fusion does have its own 3D printing slicer. Now, yes, Inventor does also have a 3D printing environment, but <laughs> let's be honest, mate, it's more of an obligatory tick in the box to say that we've got something. It barely supports any common printers for layout. Beyond that, there's just nothing in there. You can't do anything in it really of any value. I can't imagine anyone using Inventor's 3D, 3D print environment for anything productive. Fusion though, you, you probably could. It's got profiles for many common printers, such as the Creality Ender series, Prusa and Ultimaker machines. It can generate supports, simulate the additive toolpath, all whilst being obviously linked to the native CAD model. And once you're done, you can now, obviously it's a slicer, you can now put the G-code as you'd expect. Uh, Sounds like, but Fusion 360's rendering capabilities are far better than Inventor's, not even close. So, you know, sure, Inventor's got GPU-based DXR or DirectX based ray tracing built into it as of this this year, this version, 2023. But as I detailed in this video here, it's absolute toilet mate, totally unusable in the real world. Inventor Studio on the other hand, well, Inventor Studio has got a lot of tools and features that Fusion doesn't, but it's just, it's too slow. It's too clunky, frustrating, and far from something you'd actually want to use on the regular in the real world, especially when the output, the image doesn't reflect the input needed to get there. Fusion though, well, its rendering environment doesn't have anywhere near as many config options as Inventor Studio, right? There's no local lights in, in, in Fusion. You can't control, you know, scene lighting. You've got no animation or storyboarding within the rendering environment, but 
Cards on the table, mate, it just doesn't matter when you can objectively get a better render out of Fusion, when at the end of the day, that's what it's all about. But check this out, and I'm, <laughs> I am legit <laughs> angry about this. Fusion lets you bring in your own HDR image background for rendering. Just double click, adjust the exposure, done. Do you, do you have any idea how many people for how long have been screaming at the Inventor team for this? But no, no, apparently rendering isn't a priority except they then go and work on GP ray tracing, but the Fusion team seemed capable of putting it in, and they did. Livid. Anyway, Fusion also supports caustics, as you can see here with the glass refractions and also those caustics being cast onto the ground plane. Generally, it's just an all-round better out-of-the-box render engine producing better results than Inventor can with minimal effort. And in addition to this, mate, Fusion's also got a few better options for appearances or textures and can ultimately throw big renders into the Autodesk cloud servers for processing if you don't have the local resource yourself for doing those renders. Probs are the uh, obviously point, right? Because it's sort of native to what Fusion is, but Fusion's just got better data accessibility than Inventor, right? Like Inventor's data tends to be localized to a single system or a single server. And that, that comes with issues, comes with pros, comes with benefits, but it comes with a lot of issues as well. Fusion data is natively cloud hosted. So if you find yourself at an event, say you're out and about, right? You're at a show, I don't know, like a, an expo or something. You don't have your laptop with you. You're just on public Wi-Fi. You're chatting to some random guy and you want to show him a design that you've been working on. With Fusion 360, all you need is your phone. Just open it up, open up the Fusion app or even just a web browser and you can access and view any file you've ever created through the app or the web browser. Not just that, mate, it's all cloud hosted. So if you ever lose your laptop, if your laptop breaks, gets stolen, whatever, all your data is in the cloud, so there's no security risk. And if, if, again, if you get a new laptop, there's no need to move all your data over between systems. You just reinstall Fusion and you're good to go within minutes. <clears throat> Scoozy, Scoozy. Hi, right. What a day. Uh, <laughs> The irony in what's going on right this second whilst I'm recording and shooting this video is tangible. So I thought I'd interject here again for the second time uh, during uh, this shoot. Uh, during the, th this point, which is pitching the, the cloud services things being positive, because today Fusion 360 went dark, completely offline. Now, to be clear, all of Autodesk services went offline. In fact, the status page says literally everything's off. But make no mistake, mate, I could still launch Autodesk Inventor, I could still authenticate Autodesk Inventor and do stuff. Whether I was running on that sort of 30 day grace period for offline use that you get when it doesn't detect an internet connection, don't know. And I frankly don't care, mate. What matters was it, it opened and it worked. I could still work. What I couldn't do was load Fusion 360 and continue making the clips that I've been making for this video and that you've been watching in this video and obviously people couldn't work. And that's the problem, right? That's that's the issue with cloud services. And as I write this part, and as I'm speaking here and now, the services are still down. They've been down for about two hours now, and you, you just can't ignore that, can you? You just can't look past it. Uh, there's rumors circulating around that this is potentially an Amazon Web Services issue, which, again, cards on the table, mate, I, I, I don't care. It's not a me problem in the slightest. I don't give a toss. Flying high wind whose fault it is i've made entire videos in the past about this topic right the benefits of on-prem systems versus cloud systems because there's enough there to talk about but well with the initial advantage of having your data in the cloud of accessibility and all that kind of stuff comes with this huge potential risk of this exact situation happening and i'm not wanting to excuse all of these failures either by just dismissing them as right these things happen you'll hear that a lot right oh you know it's just part and parcel these things happen. This is what you kind of get when you go for the cheaper option, right? Uh, no, absolutely not. This is not okay. It, it's few. These these things are few and far between. But when they happen, they really hurt. This can, this does happen with Fusion 360, as we're seeing evidenced right this second. <laughs> can you can you believe Inventor still can't do this? Companies even made add-ons for this, and I think the add-on for this one actually became one of the most 
popular add-ons ever for Inventor, I think. Uh, it's been pulled for some reason that doesn't exist anymore. But here it is, native in Fusion 360, a fully functional red modeler. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> to be fair, the majority of supplier parts come with fully modeled threads in Fusion 360, but you can basically pick any cylindrical face and just thread it. A lot of these omissions from Inventor historically were because of performance reasons, but I was hearing all of this 15 years ago, right? When we had Intel Core 2 dual processors, right? Two cores, 1.8 gigahertz, 32-bit systems with four gigs of RAM, Quadro GPUs being shipped with 64 or 120 megabytes of video RAM. I don't pretend to be an expert on how all the software compiles and comes together, but now's not the time, but I reckon Inventor can handle all this now, regardless of the data set size. Either way, Fusion can and Fusion does it. So. Uh, this list can be questioned, no doubt. I've included some things which are only available through paid extensions, like Geometric Pattern, for example, and the Volumetric Lattice. That's the product design extension. And I also choose to not mention the likes of Fusion Manage, which is also a Fusion 360 extension. That brings capabilities that Inventor doesn't have. But because it's technically a totally separate system to Fusion, things then get a bit complicated. So I decided to leave that one out. And I've got to give a huge thanks to Kenny Cornett, uh, an ex Autodesk Expert Elite member who recently moved over to the Fusion 360 team for giving me a huge chunk of ideas to work off for this video. And with that, uh, Kenny also alluded to some direct modeling benefits that Fusion had regarding being able to create a history-free base feature that Inventor can't do. I tried, I really did. And as much as I can see it's something that Inventor can't do, I, I just can't sell that feature. I don't know who would want it when you'd use it i don't know what i don't know what it's for uh, but also fusion has top-down assembly design instead of having a separate document for each child so in that you have multiple iems multiple ipts combining up to make a full assembly in fusion 360 everything is completely or can be completely contained within one file or asset as you build an assembly top down so you've only got one document for an entire assembly there's pros and cons both ways that is also unique to Fusion. Reed, let's leave it there. This is definitely not as far from an extensive list of differences. Uh, neither was the inventor version of this either, but uh, those were my top picks. Uh, and look, the narrative that Fusion is the Fisher Price hand me down poverty model of 3D CAD tools with an Autodesk, it, it's objectively incorrect. Yes, it has the free hobbyist license, but commercially, this can end up running you up a bill more than inventor costs. Fusion 360 does come as part of the product design and manufacturing collection as a commercial license, minus the extensions. So people with that can use both Inventor and Fusion 360. And if anyone would like to purchase a license or check out the current costs, I'll leave a link, the link down in the doobly doos. I want to give it again a massive thanks to all the C-level executives who've signed up at that tier, mate. Your, your support is hugely appreciated. As always, looking forward to the first Zoom call with you guys at the end of this month. Uh, if you want to join in on that, mate, join buttons down below. And also thanks to everyone who's joined up as well at the Senior Vice President of Premium Pro Plus 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 level, which is the uh, is the regular tier for, for supporting Tech 3D. Thank you so much to everyone who's done that. It means a massive amount. So if you want to support the channel, keep these videos going. Join button is just under the video. I'll be a link in the description as well. Much appreciated. Thanks for watching. My name's Neil Cross. This is Tech 3D. And until we meet again, kudos.